Got something moving right here. Yep. It's fast. What is that? That's a huge ground beetle. Look at this. It's a warrior beetle. Oh, man. And look at the jaws on this guy. I don't feel bite. I don't know if I want to be bitten by them because these guys are strong. I can feel them in my hand, just absolutely packed with strength. And these insects are built absolutely tough. Beetles in general are known for their super hard exoskeletons, but have a feel of that guy right there. Can you feel that? Oh, How wow, it's tough is that? hard as rocks. This is a beetle that if you found in your house and you stomped on it, it would probably just scurry away and be completely unscathed. One thing that's really cool about this exact beetle here, it's a margined warrior beetle. And the reason they call it that is those margins right on the side of his shell have a purple iridescent tinge. If you get the right lighting, they are absolutely beautiful insects. Super fearsome looking, but with a closer look, you can see they're actually really beautiful. Now that warrior beetle was a super cool find, but not all beetles are created equal. And when you're out exploring, you wanna find the coolest of the cool to make your adventures truly special. When I'm out exploring for wildlife, I divide the creatures that I find into four basic categories. Staple, neat, wild, and gem. Staple tier creatures are the animals that are just everywhere. You don't need to target them. You can walk outside and just easily find them. Neat animals are a bit less common. They usually cause you to do a double take, but they're not anything to write home about. It's the wild and gem tier creatures that we really wanna target while we're out exploring. Especially the gems, which can be extremely rare, extremely special to see, and always make an adventure exciting. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly the techniques that I use to find wild and gem tier beetles on my adventures. One of the downsides of hiking habitat and scanning is that it's really very luck-based. You can go out for hours and see nothing when you're just scanning habitat. One pro tip for finding incredible beetles by simply scanning habitat is actually looking at the barks of trees. A lot of the really prominent beetles, the ones that you'd want to target, actually spend some part of their lifespan in rotting wood or some kind of decaying material, either as predators or as actual like grazing insects inside rotting logs and inside trees. So one of the places that I really like to look is on hardwoods and pines. And that is where I find some of the coolest beetles when I'm just scanning habitat. No shot. I cannot believe, I barely just turned the camera on. Look at this, right on this tree. That is exactly what I'm talking about. That's a click beetle. This is a perfect example of where knowing the right habitats and techniques can yield incredible finds. This is an Eastern eyed click beetle, probably one of the biggest click beetles in North America and probably one of the rarest and hardest to find out here in North Carolina. They're here, but you don't see them very often, that's for sure. But that margined warrior beetle was absolutely a wild encounter. This is something that I would actually consider a gem out here in the woods. These click beetles are insane. They get their name from those big old eye spots in their thorax there, and they use that to confuse predators. But they're called click beetles because of this little thing they can do here. They click, have them in your hand. They use a big spine underneath their thorax to pop. And what they can actually do is when they're on their back, it'll flip them and send them spinning through the air, catapulting to safety away from predators. And the loud noise it makes, that snap, will actually scare or startle a would-be attacker and allow this insect to make its escape. Absolutely insane. Cannot believe we found a click beetle. Now I'm actually headed out into the woods. The thing is, there are a lot of high tier beetles and the only way to find them is by flipping cover. Now what's crazy is under different types of cover, you can get different types of beetles. What I'm actually doing right now is looking for logs to flip because Underneath a lot of logs, you can get some really cool scarab beetles. Oh, wow. That's not a uh, beetle, that's a salamander, a big one. That is a nice, huge marbled salamander, probably female. Wow, what are you doing out in June? That's insane. If you're looking for cool wildlife, logs are probably the best cover to flip. The decaying wood holds in moisture, keeping a very stable temperature inside and underneath the log. It essentially creates a really nice microhabitat. And when you're hunting for invertebrates, microhabitats are your secret weapon. Oh, a lot of ants. Oh, there we go. Ah. 
crash hospital. Look at that. Here we go. This is a horned pastelus beetle. Listen to them squeaking. These guys are super talkative when you pick them up. They create that sound by a process called stridulation. They're actually rubbing some parts of their wings together, almost like a cricket, to make that squeak noise. First time I ever found these guys, I thought it was some kind of weird stag beetle, and I wasn't totally wrong, because these are in the same exact family as the stag beetles. These are a form of scarab. And believe it or not, they're not completely rare, but these aren't a beetle you're gonna see a ton out in the wild. They like to hide underneath and inside of logs where they spend most of their lives actually in social groups. This is actually a social insect, which makes it a very unique type of beetle, which is why it's a very special thing to find. This sound he's making is, a, is an alarm call, but what's insane about these beetles, they're actually capable of making over 14 different acoustic sounds, which is more than most vertebrates can do. This is exactly what I was looking for underneath logs, but flipping logs is not limited to this species. You can also find dung beetles, a lot of insane looking ground beetles. But this, this is definitely a special find underneath a log. Absolutely insane, I'm putting them back. I'm gonna keep looking for more beetles. These techniques can be extremely physically demanding and take a lot of time. But what if I told you the best insect hunters can actually make really awesome creatures come to them? If you wait until after dark, bring out a white sheet and a light, you too can trap these insects. This is probably the best way to find most of the really incredible insects ever, is simply just setting up a light trap right in your backyard. Now I've got kind of a heavy duty light. It's a thousand watt halogen work light. Um, reason I'm using a halogen is for those of you who can swing the price, halogens are gonna put out the most energy and heat. And that energy and heat is gonna attract a ton of insects. Cause it's not just the light they're attracted to, they actually want that heat. When it comes to light traps, the name of the game is patience. For the first hour or so after sunset, only staple and neat tier insects are gonna come to the trap. But if you can make it past the midnight mark, things start to get interesting. Something big just landed there. <gasps> is that what I think it is? Come here, you. Oh, that's a big dung beetle. This is why it pays to be patient. This is a Carolina copris, one of the coolest little scarab beetles you can possibly find. It's a nice little dung beetle, very compact, Super, super hard exoskeleton, and this beetle is strong. You can see it fighting against my fingers there. That is one tough beetle, an absolute tank of the insect world. It's actually past midnight right now. I've been out here for a few hours watching this trap, watching lots of little insects come, and then finally I saw a giant beetle flying around. That is the thing with light trapping, is usually you have to wait till after midnight to start seeing the really, really special stuff. These are not a beetle you see very often. They are dung beetles, they do eat poop. Um, so I'm gonna wash my hands after handling it. But this is one of the dung beetles you really don't see that often. Have a look at its appearance. They have that shovel-like face. They're super armored. This is not something that most things would be able to eat out here. And they are very, very uncommon and absolutely wild beetle to find out here. This is why I light trap. This beetle right here, it doesn't get any better than that. And as it gets later, even stranger creatures start coming to the light. Something very big. Oh my gosh. It's on my tripod. Look at that. Look at that beetle right there. That. Oh, it's huge. There are a lot of beetles that you could find out here. But this, this is by far the most menacing. This is the brown prionid and oh boy, look at those jaws. You can hear them squeaking, and that's an indication that this beetle is very, very mad. And look, it's strong, but the biggest thing about these guys is those massive jaws, and boy, believe me, they can bite. That is one menacing beetle. Look at its thorax, those thorns all along the side. Giant, menacing antennae. This is a beetle that just advertises don't mess with me. How about that? This is one of the wood boring beetles, the Cerambycids. A lot of them are considerably smaller than this big guy right here. And this is honestly not even the biggest prionid that I've seen out here in North Carolina. These things get huge, absolutely massive. Fortunately, they are not significant pests 
and they're not significantly dangerous or aggressive, but one of these gets in your house, they will surely freak you out because you can hear these guys flying. Huge wings, huge beetle, absolutely insane out here at the light trap. Wow, what a find. Now, another thing you wanna do while you're light trapping, this is kind of an unusual but pro tip. You wanna to listen to your surroundings and also look at the surrounding area away from your sheet. Sometimes there'll be insects that you can find that didn't come straight to the sheet, but were attracted to the general area due to the light. And sometimes those are even cooler than what's actually on the light trap. And that is exactly how I found this little bug. I heard it drop probably from a tree over there. Now this looks kind of like the brown prionid, but this is even weirder. Now this does not happen very often, but this is a species I have not seen before. Now I know it's not a brown prionid beetle because the body is a different shape. The antennae are smaller and the jaws look different. My, it's definitely some kind of wood boring beetle, one of the serum bicids, but you can even see it's, its head is spinier and like stockier. This is a much stockier built beetle and it is harder and stronger than the prionid. I have to use all of my finger strength to prevent this beetle from getting back and biting me. But that is absolutely insane. And a great third beetle here at the light trap. How about that? Oh my gosh, this thing is strong. Its thorax is even more spiny than that of the prionid beetle. This thing looks like it could be a boss from like Dark Souls or something. This is a creepy looking beetle and that is why I absolutely love it. Light trapping, flipping, and scanning habitat can yield incredible beetles, but there's actually a really strange technique that I've used to catch really insane beetles in the past. Right here is a video where I'll show you how to do it. I hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.